Hello, welcome everyone to the third episode of Brew Talk with Mr. Beer. My name is Robert Lewis. I'll be your host for today's show. We are filming live on Facebook from our offices here in Tucson, Arizona. To thank you all those who are tuning in or who will be tuning in, we really appreciate that. Um, if you are not able to watch our show live every week, you can find episodes um, on our blog page at mrbeer.com slash blog, on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash mrbeer, and on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash mrbeer. Uh, while we're on the topic of social media, if you would please follow our Facebook page, Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube page, we would greatly appreciate that, and it'd be a good way to keep up to date on all things that are Mr. Beer and keep you know what's going on in the loop. Um, also, if you're interested about knowing more about Mr. Beer, just brewing with Mr. Beer, we do have a Facebook group called Mr. Beer's Brewing Society. If you would um, like to join that, it's a great place just to learn new stuff about brewing and just be with a community of fellow Mr. Beer brewers so far. It's doing pretty well. Uh, you can find that group on our Facebook page. Just go to the group section and click on groups, or you can search it in the search bar on Facebook. Uh, the name is Mr. Beer's Brewing Society. It is a closed group. We just ask that you have to answer three questions, and we'll go ahead and uh, let you in. Um, if you are a first-time watcher to our show, welcome. We appreciate you joining us. Our shows work a little bit like this. Um, I'll talk about a topic related to brewing or brewing with Mr. Beer. Then at the end, we open up for a Q&A on Facebook. Um, so if you have any questions, post them in there. If you have questions later, you can comment on the Facebook post itself or comment on our YouTube post on YouTube, and we will go ahead and get back to you with the answers to those. Um, I will try my best remember to read the questions out loud so those watching later actually know what the questions are. Um, before we get into today's topic, we can talk about what I'm drinking today. Um, today I have a beer from Revision Brewing Company, Planetary Fog. It's a hazy IPA. It's actually uh, really good. Very hoppy, high ABV, just a, just a well-rounded beer. All right, so today is an exciting topic, I think. So we're talking about how is hopped malt extract made? I think a lot of people don't quite understand the process that goes behind it. They think it's kind of different than brewing, but I think explaining some of these steps and how it's stuff or how it's made really just kind of help you realize that you're basically getting the same thing that you would get coming right out of the brewery. Um, so the process is basically the same thing as brewing with all grains. As a customer, you're getting the same thing. Like I said, all you're doing is just saving six hours of your time from brewing with all grains. Uh, before we talk about how our hop malt extract is made, we can kind of talk about where it's made, which is also a very interesting fact as well. Uh, so we are owned by Cooper's Brewery. They are based in Australia. And they are the largest provider of malt extract for home brewing in the world, which is really cool. Uh, Cooper's got into home brewing products in 1977. They started canning hop malt extract in 1984. So they've been doing this for quite a long time and they know what they're, what they're doing over there. Uh, so Cooper's oversees the entire production process from the malting of the grains to putting the hop malt extract into the can. So it's a fully automated system from start to finish and it helps ensure that you, know, you as a customer are getting the best quality you can get and also the freshest product that is available. Um, kind of a fun fact, in November 2017, Cooper's opened up a $65 million malting plant at the brewery. So it's one of the most state-of-the-art malting facilities in the world. It's all stainless steel, fully automated. And what this does, this allows Cooper's greater control now over the entire process from getting in the raw grains themselves to what winds up you know, in your can of hot malt extract, which is really cool. Um, so the first step of making hot malt extract is just the malting of the grains themselves. And malting is a three-step process. So stage one is steeping. This is where raw barley is transferred to the steeping house and it is submerged in water. The steeping process is over when the barley reaches a moisture level that will let the starches and proteins kind of break down at the same time. Uh, stage two is germination, which is you're taking your steeped barley and it's then transferred from the germ or yes, yeah, transferred over to the germination vessels where it will be in the process of what would normally be sprouting if you were growing a plant. Uh, the proteins and carbohydrates of the grain begin to break down, which cause the grain husk to open. This process is controlled by temperature and moisture that is pumped up from the bottom of the grain bed. And the grain is consistently being churned over, so that way the grain's not sticking together or clumping together. So basically, it's a big round container with all these grains in it, little tiny holes that are shooting air up, and that's kind of what's you know, helping the germination process. Uh, step three is kilning. 
this is what's stopping the germination process. If you did not stop this process, your grain would just turn into a plant, um, which is, you can't brew with that. Uh, depending on the type of malt that is being made, the kilning time and temperature can vary. So here, the goal is to take the majority of the moisture out of the grain. So it's usually done in a three-stage process, and each process is at different temperatures for different amounts of time, depending on what type of grain you are, or what type of malt you're trying to make to use. Um, this is important because it helps ensure that the enzymes remain intact to be used in the mashing process. And, and just like within the germination, the hot air is coming up from the top of the kiln and rises through the grain bed to make sure it all gets equally touched while it's getting churned over. And at Cooper's Brewery, they use heat exchangers as well, so they're not you know, wasting any air. They're reusing all that hot air and keeping it in circulation. So that is the, the first stage of this. So at the end of that process, what you have now is malted grain. This is basically be like any grain that you get from some of our Mr. Beer recipes. Any grain you get from a homebrew shop is malted. Um, so from here, it is transferred into malt storage silos where it will be stored until it is ready to use. Um, so now the process comes when you're getting ready to brew up a batch. And when they're doing this, this process is fully automated. Once they start it, they'll finish in the can. There's no storage or lag time in between that. So when you're getting ready to brew a batch, the grain is transferred from the malt storage. It is run through a mill to break up the grain, and then it's transferred into the mash tun, which is filled with heated water. So now at this stage, the heated water will help the enzymes convert the starches into fermentable sugars. Depending on the makeup of your grain bill, this will determine what kind of beer you're brewing. So like stouts or porters are going to have more dark or roasted malt that were, you know, in, in the kiln a little bit longer, while lagers will have a little more lighter malts that weren't basically cooked as much. Uh, the mash will maintain a temperature of 148 to 154, and this process can take up to a few hours to complete. Uh, once mashing is complete, the liquid is sent through a filter that will remove all the spent grains, which is nice, you don't want that. And now what you have is your wort. So this is similar to when you're brewing with Mr. Beer, you add your can into your water, you mix that up, you get wort. This is the same stuff that they have going on in the brewery at this point. Oh, I'm sorry, as I reference my notes, it's a very complex topic, so I want to make sure I cover everything for you guys. Um, so once this process is complete, um, basically all the hops have been added to the boil. So it's in the brew kettle, so now it's boiling hops, hops of different additions, different times, depending on what we're brewing or what they're making. And from here, the mixture is transferred to the whirlpool. This is where it will help any hot material settle out of the wort as well. Um, so something that is used standard practice in, in most breweries. So, so far, all the steps that we've kind of gone over basically cover the topic of brewing from all grain brewing, how you would normally go. Um, so this is where we get a little different here. So this is where Coopers will split off some of the wort, the hop wort. Um, some will go to fermenters, which will have yeast added and will be brewed and will be bottled into the actual Cooper's beer that they sell in Australia. The other will go into what is called an evaporator. So this is how you get your hop malt extract out of that mixture. Uh, Cooper's uses a center, centrifugal evaporator. I think I said that right. Uh, that removes the water without the use of any additional heat. So all they're using is the heat or the heated wort that comes over from the brew kettle. They're not adding any heat to it. They're not boiling anything. They're not doing anything that would degrade the process of the hop malt extract that you're getting, which is really cool. Uh, so the centrifuge during this process removes about 80% of the moisture. And then what you are left with is the syrup substance that you get in your can of extract. From here, the hot malt extract is plugged or taken um, directly to the canning line where it's packaged and ready to go. So the whole process from pulling the grains out of the storage facility all the way to putting it in your can is all done in the matter of you know a day, probably six hours, depending on how long it takes them to do that. But they're really about efficiency and quality control. Uh, that's what I think one of the unique things about Cooper's Brewery is, is that they are very precise and they control the entire process. It's fully automated, they oversee everything, nothing really messes with anything like that. It's just a very well um, organized company and they do a very good job at creating premium malt extract. So I think that's why brewing with Cooper's malt or Mr. Beer malt extract, which is the same thing, will give you premium results versus any other products that are out there. Um, so that's about it for today. I think we're gonna wrap it up. Uh, we do film live on Facebook every Wednesday at noon um, Pacific time, 3 p.m. on the East Coast. Don't forget to join our Facebook group. 
And uh, just let us know if you have any other questions about the show or future topics that you want to see. And we're all in there uh, chatting away. So we will see you guys next time. And thanks for watching.